Hello, everyone. World Schoolers, Trailblazing Families, how is everyone? Let me check to see if we are live. I think so. My internet is a little slow, so but let me, oh, let me mute myself. Okay, good. All right, so we are live. I see that and um, might take a minute or two, a few seconds for people to show up, but um, for those of you really uh, watching the replay, welcome. Um, I have a one, the wonderful Tiffany with us today, and Tiffany was part of my first beta program for my new course, How to World School and How to Travel Extensively as a Family. So welcome, Tiffany. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for having me, Liz. This is helpful. Your course was extremely helpful, so I'm excited for the supplemental piece. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, I I, um, meant, I saw that you posted somewhere asking questions because you said that you're going to be in the UK and you have X number of days to fill and you're still trying to work that out. And I thought this would be a really good opportunity for us to do a live and work through this together and um, you know, I want to find out what you've been doing uh, to research and plan, and then um, maybe I can make su some suggestions about where to look and help you figure this out, because it is time consuming. Um, I think in the old days, you know, when people would go on vacation, we'd hire a travel agent, right? Who would kind of <laughs> do everything for us. And even if you're, you know, okay, you, you want to go on a trip to Hawaii or Mexico, that's easy. But, you know, sometimes travel agents would have to plan help families plan like the grand tour of Europe and they would need to book like suggest where to go and obviously book the flights and the hotels but also maybe find the tour guides or you know the activities to do and nowadays we're kind of DIYing it I mean obviously there are travel agents still who do this um, but it seems like a lot of world schoolers um, it's fun to plan and you know we have the internet and so many different tools so we're kind of DIYing it um, so I just wanted to find out a little bit more about, uh, maybe you can explain to everyone a little bit about your family. You live in Santa Fe and you're going to be taking off on a big year long adventure pretty soon. So why don't you yep. introduce yourself and let everyone know your exciting plans. Sure. Um, I'm Tiffany Axtell, and I do live in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, I have four children. One's out of the house already, but my husband and I will be traveling with our 12, 13, and our oldest, our older one will actually turn 16 the day we start. So he'll be, he'll have 12, Happy birthday. 14, and 16. <laughs> yeah. So we leave, we actually leave Santa Fe mid-June, June 15th, and um, but we don't leave the country until early July. Our kids go to summer camp in Wisconsin, so we'll be heading up to the Midwest um, while they do that and kind of hanging out, and then we'll be heading to London July 13th. So that's our first stop, and we will be traveling from July this summer to August of 24, um, full-time, and then we'll see after that. <laughs> yes, so this is a trial year to see how your family likes it, how your kids like it. Um, so what have you planned so far? You you booked flights to the UK, to London, and mm -hmm. hotels yet, or Airbnbs? So yes, we have our flights to London out of Minneapolis, and then we have our first week booked, uh, actually first eight nights booked um, in London at an Airbnb. So um, we originally had planned on going to see some friends in Bath after that. And then um, starting on the 27th, we have our first house sit through housesitters.com in Oxford. So um, our friends from Bath realized they were going to be gone during the dates that we were going to be staying with them, and um, and that's not going to work out. So we have a five uh, five night six day gap to fill <laughs> between okay. London and, and Oxford. Um, so uh, we're trying to figure that out, and I haven't done okay. any planning really around it because we thought we had it figured out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm not super familiar with that area yet, so I don't really know like what how many different towns are in between you you kind of want to find something in that area correct um I think something within like a two to three hour train ride would be ideal um 
I think Oxford and London are super close to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, So as as soon as we can get back to London, you know, by the morning of the 27th and then we can hop over to Oxford, it's fine. So I originally looked at maybe the Lake District, um, but I, I mean, we've been just getting ready to leave and planning kind of the itinerary we have through November booked and mostly planned. Um, And I'm just sort of already have decision fatigue. So I didn't have it in me to sit and research all of the Lake District. So I was hoping someone else would just tell me what to do. (laughs) (laughs) And I wish I could tell you what to do, but I'm not familiar with that area. But um, I I know you posted in a Facebook group, uh, like a world schooling group. What else have you done? Have you looked um, on Instagram? Because I know you like to follow different travelers on Instagram. Can you search Lake District, hashtag Lake District or... Um, I don't I'm use Instagram sure. as much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can. Um, I just haven't yet. Yeah. To be honest, we're really in the throes of getting everything ready to go um, here. So and my kids are, my kids are in traditional school or they're in in-person school here. And so it's the end of the year madness. So I've not done really anything. Okay. Um, have you considered asking them if they wanted to help with any travel planning? They have helped with some of the other parts. Um, this one, yeah, I could. They're they're gone for the next 10 days. They're on yeah, a school camping yeah. trip. So I kind of was hoping to get all so the first couple weeks figured out at least because I, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people fly by the seat of their pants and I'm hoping we get there at some point. But I also realize that we're going to be there in the height of summer and mm-hmm. I want to make sure that we find something that fits all five of us and is not the most expensive accommodation. Right, right. <laughs> the, the leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The prices are getting up. Um, all right. One other suggestion other than the Facebook groups, because I do think it's a good idea to ask, you know, ask other world schoolers, um, people who travel with kids, is have you um, tried to join any local expat groups like London expats or London digital oh, nomad right. groups? So think about that because the local expats and well, locals in general, and obviously they speak English there, um, they might be able to suggest it more so than world schoolers. Because I feel like the world schoolers group, you know, we go everywhere around the world. We mm-hmm. might not be specialist to that local area. Mm -hmm. So maybe, um, yeah, look on Facebook and try to find expat groups for London or whatever area or UK travel, start searching um, for those keywords on Facebook. It is nice to go in the Facebook groups and ask. And sometimes, unfortunately, you ask to join and they don't accept until after your trip is over. That's happened to (laughs) me before. But the locals, the local groups, the expat groups, digital nomad groups, try those too. Um, there's also other family travel groups. So, you know, maybe type in, say, you know, the Facebook groups um, or just Facebook has a search and you click on groups and see if you can find those keywords. Another good group um, is Girls Love Travel. Are you in that group at all? It's a giant I'm group. I'm not. There's hundreds of thousands of gr- women in there. Um, and there, there's because it's such a large group, I like to ask uh-huh. in there. And then... Um, now I like to also, um, I like to watch YouTube videos, um, of it, if I know, you know, the certain area, um, or you can type in Lake district and, uh, blogs too, but I like to be kind of audio and visual and I like watching videos. So I will go on YouTube and I'll search, um, the, the keywords like Sicily, you know, um, top things to do in Sicily. Cause I wasn't that familiar. I'm, some people had given me a few names of towns in Sicily. Um, and then once I got the name of the town, I would type in Syracuse or Taramina, you know, Palermo. I'm in Palermo now. And, you know, things to do. And again, it, it depends on how you like to get your information, um, whether it's from reading it, you know, on a blog. Again, the YouTube suggestion, you could do it just from Googling and find blogs. Unfortunately, Sometimes when you type things, you're going to get a bunch of ads, you know, from the tourism (laughs) department of whatever. So, you know, maybe add the word blog in there. And you, it's often more helpful because my daughter, Gabriella, I was asking her to help me plan the Rhine River trip um, Mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, And she would just type in Rhine River, Germany. And then again, she's going to get a lot of the ads, the sponsored posts or whatever. But um, 
you know, I asked her to, to write a full sentence, like where to go, where to visit along the Rhine River. Um, sometimes writing a full sentence will um, help you get more blog posts because that's what you okay. want. You want the blogs, not just the, the companies that are selling the tour or whatever. Um, and then um, sometimes underneath on Google, at least on my laptop, it'll show me similar questions that others have asked. So that's yeah, I've seen that. Um, now, in the old days, before the Internet, I used to travel with the Lonely Planet guidebook. And uh -huh. they still have they still have an online version. I mean, they still have the physical books, but on the online version, whether it's um, Boaters or Lonely Planet or you know the various guidebooks out there, um, they have like where to go in the UK, where to go in this area. Um, okay. So look there. And um, I used to be a big well, I still am. I'm a big fan of, when I'm going to Europe of Rick Steves. Remember him? Uh, yes. <laughs> so when I went backpacking around the world in 1998-99 as a young, younger woman, I went to the library and I got his VHS tapes or C, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if they were DVDs or whatever, because he had the PBS station or whatever he had on public tele television. So I would binge watch those at home to okay. get excited for my trip around Europe. Um, but, you know, he's on YouTube now. So you can okay. just type in Rick Steves and then uh, the Lake District, UK. Um, cause he gives lots of tips, but also tells you where to go, you know? Okay. And like, I watched his Rick Steves of Italy and he would say, if you're in Italy only for, you know, a week, you know, two weeks, a month, these are the top places to go. Um, and again, you don't have to follow what he has to say, cause he's talking about tourist stuff and you okay. guys may, or may not want to do that. You know, I, I feel, and we have in Italy, been going to a lot of the top places. Um, but we've also found some off the beaten track places as well. Um, so those are some of my suggestions. And then, you know, another one, an oldie and a goodie is TripAdvisor. I, it's full of retired people, not just retired <laughs> people, but, you know, retired people, because we're traveling and it's 80% retired people, unless it's a school holiday. And they know how to travel. They know where to go. And they, okay. uh, they're retired. So they fill TripAdvisor with tons of advice. And they ask questions. Like they're using TripAdvisor. And they have, for, I don't know, a decade or more. Like we use Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's there's like real old school chat rooms. I've used yes. TripAdvisor. I actually totally didn't think about that for this trip. Because I have used the forums to help um plan actually that's how I found a, our driver um for Ecuador was on the TripAdvisor okay. forums and yeah I forgot about that people do great detailed trip um yeah. like trip what do they call them like there's like a certain word that they use like use like trip review or something but yeah, yeah. okay yes um so again a bit old school but um you know, TripAdvisor, again, the seniors know how to travel, the retired people, they have the time to spend all day on these forums and type in detailed information. <laughs> um, another one I've tried, let me try to, op oops, let me try to open it up, is, um, so Wikipedia has, I think it's Wikipedia, um, but it has um, Wicked Travel. Let me try oh, to. I always forget about that. I've never used that. Hold on, let me try to open it up and then I'll share. My computer is a little slow. Oh, Pamela's here. She says Brighton, south of London on the coast, right. one hour track train. Well, that uh, yeah, that is a beach town. It's a, uh, I've heard of it, I've never been, but Brighton, check that out. Okay, I'm writing that Brighton. down, thank you. <laughs> um, let me try to share. Sorry guys, my computer is a little slow. <clears throat> and then let me share the correct screen. Okay, here. All right, hopefully you can see that. So um, mm -hmm. again, take me to, I don't know, Lake District, UK, maybe. Is that working? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> nothing is matching, darn. <laughs> um, well, what was the other one? Oh, I had 
sorry, I had other stuff in here. Wikipedia and then Wiki Voyage. Let me try that one. <clears throat> okay, so well, we'll just say UK, I guess. Oops, United Kingdom. Um, so yeah, I what the heck? Global file usage. Okay. Why is this not showing me? Sorry, guys. United Kingdom. Okay. Anyway, so, I mean, this is a little bit of a geography lesson, but it does let you know the different areas of it, and you can read through these different cities, and it just gives you a quick little rundown on the different um, places. Giants okay. Causeway, that's up in Northern Ireland. I've been there. Lake District. Um, so I know it's it's a lot of it's a lot of searching, traveling, but look at this has the principal towns in the Lake District. Awesome. So okay. again, what I would do, because I like YouTube videos, as I read this as quickly as I can, and then I would look on YouTube just because I like to watch YouTube videos on that. Okay. Um, and then Another thing we've talked about is I tried recently um, to, I asked chat GPT to make suggestions for a, a trip on the Rhine River. My daughter and I are heading to Germany soon and like which towns, I didn't know, you know, where to go. Um, so um, you can just ask. So chat GPT is, is artificial intelligence. It might not give you the correct info, but it's, you can have a conversation with it. So I would put, where would you suggest a family visits in the Lake District of the UK? Let's try that. And now it takes a little bit of a minute to write, but this is basically writing you a blog article. Okay. And so it's suggesting That's crazy. like Windermere Beatrix Potter's house. Oh my God. Who wrote Peter Rabbit? Okay, your kids are a little older, but still. Um, so again, what ChatGPT does, it's basically read, I, from what I understand, this and the Google version have read the internet. So they're finding articles and it's um to um, you know, they're they're answering your questions in a much more specific way than just a Google search term results. Okay. So um, so I would, maybe your kids can help you too, because it's kind of fun for them, but uh, okay. they would, you know, they suggest a bunch of stuff and then you can okay. Google these places. Does that make sense? And Absolutely. then, you know, okay. You could also say, um, what to do in Brighton beach. Okay. Um, we'll see that. And I forgot to say, like, you could even talk about that. Um, you could say, tell me more about Hilltop. You know, it's like okay. a conversation and it learns what you're asking and you can have a long conversation with ChatGPT. Um, okay, so these are places to visit in Brighton Beach. Cool, so that's pretty amazing. I haven't seen that in action yet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, again, I, I have heard that sometimes ChatGPT will make mistakes. So you can't, you know, I mean, this is probably, it's probably scraped the internet and found blog articles about Brighton Beach and it's giving it to us, but it's pretty amazing. Okay. Yeah. Are there any questions you want me to ask? Yeah. Well, I have um, what to do with teens there, maybe. Yes. Uh, you want to say best places in the UK to visit with teens? Sure. Yeah. Okay. What are, or where? Oh, what are whatever the uh, best places in the UK to visit with teenagers? Oops, whoops, plural. Okay, let's see. Yeah, because I don't know if they're going to just suggest Harry Potter stuff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Harry Potter Studio, there it is, <laughs> Edinburgh. Oh yeah, the Fringe Festival. My friend went to that. My and kids wanted to go to that, but it it was so expensive to get up there and stay. 
in August when that when during it's the fringe. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the problem during these festivals. They're awesome, but they the price is like quadruple. Okay, so that does suggest the Lake District. Okay. Cool. But that's very cool. So I will copy and paste this and send it to you, I guess, in your email. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and it says Bath. So Cornwall, Liverpool, mm -hmm. they're into the Beatles. So some pretty good suggestions, don't you think? Yeah, that's great. And then I can divide this up and maybe each one of my kids could even use Jet chat gpt or, yeah. or one of the others to kind of dive a little deeper yes in. what are the top things to visit i mean they mentioned a few things but you can also say um i mean you can ask for restaurant recommendations um okay. sports you know whatever activities they're interested in um, okay. so i don't know i just started using it to help me with travel because i saw other people doing it and uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, Pamela is saying Royal Pavilion, Palace Pier, The Lane, Seaside, Arts Theater, Boats, Downs, Zip Lines, Jet Skis, Bike Tours, oh, wow. Easy Crowd <laughs> Pleaser. Oh, Pamela went to college there. <laughs> That's why she in, knows. In so Brighton? Um, Pamela, did you go to college in Brighton or London? I don't know. But anyway, hopefully she will answer. Very cool. Um, okay, thank you, Pamela. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, and Pamela is, is a well-traveled person. So if anyone else is watching who has other suggestions, um, you know, I, I, I do see people using Facebook and uh, Facebook groups, the World School groups, and I do too, of asking, you know, where to go and um, suggestions because you want, you want people, like-minded people who are world schooling to answer that, not just tourists. So I get it. Yes. Um, and we don't want just, you know, again, the places where only senior citizens like to visit. I mean, we have teams, <laughs> right? So it's very specific and we're traveling, not just to be tourists, but to learn stuff. So I, I get asking the world school groups, but I do feel like people, it, it you know, you got to just use your old fashioned Googling thing and it takes time. But I think the chat GPT can help because you could ask specific questions and, you know, you can, again, can you please elaborate on the Lake District, you know, so you can continue the conversation, because um, it will save all the previous conversations, conversations back and forth. So okay. I think I think this will be a better tool for you than um, just Googling. But um, again, I mentioned the other websites. Um, so don't forget them. Yeah, I wrote those all down. Okay, good. And um, yeah, so I, I hope it helps, but um, maybe have your kids help you with that and then you can get a little further. And, and you know, for me, again, am I frozen? I'm a little frozen. Oh, there you Sorry. Go. Yeah, um, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, we know our, our friend Sonia and William, mm -hmm. they plan their whole year in Latin America, like every day almost and booked <laughs> everything. That is amazing, but I just, I like to be a little spontaneous and, and I just am not that organized, um, but I like to have a rough idea of where I'm going. And I do get it that, you know, if you wait too long and you're going there during the busy season, the best places, the best prices will be sold out. So yeah, you know, it's a good idea to plan a little sooner. Um, I want to see, we have a few people watching. I want to see if anyone has questions and anyone who's watching the replay, I would love for you guys to, to maybe put in here, what are your best websites or blogs for planning travel and getting ideas about where to go? Um, I mean, Tiffany's going to the UK. She's um, going to be in London. She's got that planned and the bath trip. And I, maybe you're still going to go there, even though your friends are gone, or are you going to go visit them later? I think we'll probably go to bath after Oxford. Um, we're going to be leaving the UK we don't have a set time yet, but we are going to be going to Norway after the UK. Okay. Um, we do, well, we have a leeway. We have um, an Airbnb in Norway that's like mid August. So we have a little. Okay. Do you have room. a, you don't have a flight book to Norway yet? Not yet. So we're trying to kind of figure out exactly what we're going to do in the UK okay. before we book that. Mm -hmm. Be prepared that flying into the UK, sometimes they're a little strict about foreigners, even Americans. Um, 
they're worried that we're going to move there and stay forever. <laughs> so it's a good idea to have an onward ticket. We will by the time we get there. Okay, yeah, good. That's the hope. So I just kind of, uh, I'm still working with our friends to figure out exactly what days we can visit, but, and then okay. whatever days are the cheapest days to fly to Norway, right. we'll do. <laughs> of course. Okay. Awesome. Good. Well, um, yeah, I, again, I, I think, again, having your kids help, um, and maybe your husband, I mean, just to figure out where to go. I'm really trying that with now that my kids are 14, because I feel like I've been the one that's been the travel planner and, you know, and I, I plan so much. It's, <laughs> it is, it's, I love doing it. I love doing it. There was this one time when I finally decided, oh, we're going to go to this place. I made the decision. And then instead of doing some other important work stuff, I was like, I was just online planning, like looking at flights and looking at Airbnbs and trying to figure out, because I, I do love doing it, but it is exhausting. Um, mm -hmm. but now I'm really trying to get my kids involvement because, you know, that we're, I'm doing it for them and they're, yeah. they're the ones who are benefiting, you know, a lot from world schooling and traveling. And I mean, of course I benefit too, but sometimes I'm taking them, them to places I've already been. So, um, so yeah, I'm trying to get them to help more and do the research. And, um, yeah, I just showed her the chat GPT with the Rhine river and we're like, okay, that's what we'll do, you know, but sometimes yeah. you really have to dig around because we thought initially uh because we're going to be meeting some distant relatives in germany uh where my in a village where my the area where my grandmother was born before she immigrated mm -hmm. to us so we don't know them yet but after we see them we have x like four three four days to kill before uh, our flights out of frankfurt so like you we're like what are we going to do with it so I thought, okay, we'll go to the Rhine River because I've been there. Be, I've been, I took like a one day thing, um, but I kind of forgot how it works. And I would Google and it would show me these eight day cruises up and down the Rhine, you know, like these very large, luxurious, you know, $3,000 eight day cruise. And I'm like, no, we don't <laughs> need that. We just need like day trips. We don't need to sleep on the cruise. Anyway, so I, I was digging around and I have a friend from Germany who let me know, uh, gave me a link, um, but we found the, like the day ferry company, but their website was terrible. It was really hard to figure out where it would go. And it would be like destination. And then, you know, all these places, I'm like, well, I don't even know where these places are. And then it would show <laughs> me sort of a tiny map. And I'm like, where is this? So I'm looking at Google maps and I'm trying to figure out, okay, if we get into we go on, go on the ferry at Mines. We want to maybe eventually end up in Cologne. But I had no idea. Does it take a day? Does it take three days? You know, like, I had no idea. <laughs> so that, that's the kind of, you know, things you don't know. And where should we stop? And where should we spend the night? Um, anyway, I found out that there, there, there is this one cruise that goes from uh, near Mines to another place. It, we can see a bunch of castles and they stop a little bit. But there's no ferry to Cologne. Um, okay. So we'll have to take a train there. But it took me a while to dig through. And I even e <laughs> emailed that ferry company. So, um, so yeah, I wish it was easier. Um, but I really hope that the chat GPT will help you answer those questions. You know? Yeah, I, I hadn't seen that in action. And I'd heard people kind of chatting about it. But um, now that I can, now that I got to see it, in real time I think that'll yeah. be pretty helpful and my kids would love using it yeah. <laughs> my, my I think, I think it'll save recently used it I think it'll save a lot of time but know that you need to double check the info because yeah. it's not always correct because That's fine. It's, yeah it's, it kind of gives you a broad idea yeah and then from there maybe use that as a jumping off point and then finding blog articles or you know we're at which, whichever social media you like. I mean, I like watching YouTube videos and I have, um, what I do typically is <clears throat> I'll watch a few YouTube videos about a certain city I want to go to. And then whenever people, you know, suggest something, a place, a museum, a church, a restaurant, I will save it into my Google maps. And Smart. so all yeah. of a sudden I have like 20 things of, you know, listed in my Google maps for Palermo and then I'll be walking around, you know, a week later in Palermo or three days later, and we'll be like, oh, we're right by this market. Let's make a detour, detour and go there. So that yeah. helps me a lot of crisscrossing the city. Um, okay. So yeah, Pamela has made some good suggestions of where to go. I saved all those. Yeah. Good. 
All right. Well, any last minute questions? Does this help? I don't think so. Yeah, this was super helpful. I think I just, you know, I did have so many things going on getting ready yeah. to leave and so many decisions to make that my brain just sort of needed someone to be like, yeah, this look this yes. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I feel the same because I'm like, the deadline is looming. We're going to go. And if I don't book it soon, the prices are going to go up, you know, because yeah. it's busy season. And I have to force myself. I sometimes will schedule. We've talked about this schedule things in my calendar, like, and put yeah. it high on my priority list. Like you have to plan <laughs> this. Um, but yeah, please maybe ask your kids to help because I mean, they're teenagers and this is part of um, world schooling is for them to help mm -hmm. plan it. And they're learning along the way. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. And everyone watching, please ask um, questions in this chat. If you uh, oh, yes. Good question. Do you rely on Google map reviews? I do. I do. And I actually leave them. I left one um, the other day. I went to this recent little fish market restaurant and it it was like I wasn't sure about going there because it didn't have a lot of reviews, but it was near my Airbnb and it was wonderful and they steamed mussels for me. So I took a bunch of pictures and I posted a really nice five star review for them. Um, yeah, I do uh, do Google map reviews and um I, you know, a lot, a lot of people ask, like, do you have suggestions for X, Y, Z? I'm like, yes, you, you know, you, I could make suggestions, but also Google, Google maps. I mean, the reviews, TripAdvisor, Trustpilot. I mean, it's crowdsourcing. You know, there's so many people out there who are giving good reviews or not so good reviews. So it's good to know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you're watching this, please um, ask questions. We can continue this conversation after the video's over. Or if you have suggestions for Tiffany and anyone else interested in travel planning, um, you know, if you're really good at traveling and love doing this and have some hidden resources that we don't know about, please let us know. And uh, before we sign off, you know, we mentioned uh, Tiffany joined my beta program for my new course on how to world school and travel extensively as a family. It was a 12 week course that, that went January, February, March. I have taken a break to fast travel around Italy and we have, I've delayed the second program until June 5th. It was supposed to start in May, but um, I need to get a few more ducks in the row. So if you want to join, uh, reach out to me. We can have a quick Zoom meeting so we can get to know each other and I can answer some of your questions and we can find out if it's a good fit for you. Um, but I know Tiffany and the others um, really enjoyed it. And I met with somebody recently and she said one of the top reasons other than learning from me and the, the course, I have 350 Google slides, is she really is looking forward to the community aspect, the weekly Zoom meetings. Don't you think, Tiffany, that that was a really Absolutely. great thing? Yeah. And it was, it's so nice to be able to have people who are in the same, um, you know, phase as you are planning or similar phases and that, you know, say this is what's happening this week and encourage each other. And it, it was really invaluable. And just the information too, I feel like um, it took my overwhelm from way out here, way down here, because I had a lot more tangible you know, things to, I, I knew what we were doing. It, it really just yes. gave me a kind of a path and a plan. So it was very helpful. I suggest anyone who's interested in um, learning the world school, take it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I awesome. hope to jump in on some of your, <laughs> your coming Zoom calls because I'm yes. in that community. Well, that's and a I nice do... thing. That's a nice thing is you can continue to, to come to our Thursday Zoom meetings, group Zoom meetings for as long as you'd like. So yeah. Um, anyway, everyone reach out to me if you're interested. Um, the uh, rate is uh, still discounted. It's 500 US for it's going to be actually 13 weeks. 13 may or may not be an unlucky number, but it's or it's 12 weeks with a bonus week just because there's so much information. <laughs> so reach out to me and um, it's a discounted 50% off. <laughs> and um, there'll be probably over 50 hours of content. It's a lot, but it's week by week. A lot of information is recorded. You can um, access it later. So mm -hmm. anyway, thanks, That's Tiffany, wonderful. for sharing um, your uh, travel questions and your story mm -hmm. with us. And um, do you want to share, mention your Instagram or anything where people sure, can follow yeah. your travels? Yeah, um, we have a family travel account um, on Instagram. We're pretty active over there and we'll be sharing. We're just kind of starting to share some of the behind the scenes of our um, world schooling prep 
and we'll be sharing throughout the entire journey. So we are the underscore explorers, A X P L O R E R S. <laughs> Our last name is Axtel. So we're the explorers. Um, so yeah, come join us over there. We love the community. The travel community we've met over there has been fantastic. So awesome. Awesome. And then yeah. maybe you can come to this chat later and put your link in the chat. Absolutely. And yeah. So we'll group. do that. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Well, I'm excited that you're becoming a real live trailblazing family and <laughs> can't wait for more to join us in this lifestyle. Same. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, awesome. thanks for watching. This is Liz Quain with Trailblazing Families. My twins and I have been traveling and world schooling for over six years, and I'm happy to share about our experiences. Make sure to check out the other videos on this channel. I do have a playlist of all the other interviews of other world schooling families and service providers. Uh, we're all happy to share um, our information and wisdom about how to best live this world schooling digital nomad and family travel lifestyle. If you're new to world schooling and need a bit of help, I do have a super comprehensive 12 week program on how to travel extensively as a family and how to world school, how to educate your kids. There's many different ways to do it. So reach out to me and schedule a no obligation Zoom meeting so we can have a quick chat and see if my program is a good fit for you. Thanks and happy trails.